Hey guys, it's Bridgette with Sandy with Seed Company and here I'm working on this old tractor here on our newest farm which we are super excited to announce. Today we have a special visitor that I'm so excited about. Good friend Kevin from Epic Gardening is coming out to shoot the farm and check out all the new things we have growing. But before we get to that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you can be notified anytime we put out a video. Oh, look who we have here. <laughs> What's up? Working on a tractor, huh? Yep, always something. <laughs> this thing was built in 48. That's like a lot of years it's before like I was two, even born. Two and a half times of me. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Good to see Good you. Good to see you. How are you? So this place is huge. Yeah. Compared to your old spot, or your current spot. We're in a much bigger space than your backyard, because your backyard is like half an acre, right? Total property was an acre, but yeah, once you boil it down to exactly where we're going, yeah, yeah growing, it's only about an acre. And or we're half sitting an acre. on like what here? This is four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. And we've and you've got, I mean we can see it in a second, but like one, two, three, four-ish spots already mm -hmm. kind of prepped out. Yep. Yeah. So we've been here since April of okay. this year. So it's been a lot of just getting it started. There was nothing here. The sat fallow for about 10 years. Okay. So it was fixing broken irrigation lines, getting equipment working. So um, we're a little bit behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone is all the time these times, yeah, right? So, totally. And so, I mean, talk to me about this. Like why, why this space? Because seed farming is way different than normal farming, yeah, right? You're, you're growing them different game. to not eat, yep. right? Yeah, so yeah. we came out here because the demand in 2020, 21 yeah. was so big. Yeah. And as a lot of people saw during the pandemic, um, you know, transportation systems were breaking down. You couldn't get certain things. And so we really made a decision to double down and lease some land so that we can produce even more varieties locally. Mm -hmm. um, so this space allows us to, you know, quadruple. I mean, even more than that. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's amazing sure. how much more seed production we can do out here, the different varieties we can do. And the research is different out here because we're in Ramona yeah. and like you got to be frying in that shirt. I'm roasting right <laughs> yeah, now, but I'm hot. not getting burned at least. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's total different climate, which allows us to do more research and yeah. find out what varieties do well out here. Yeah. And we actually can do more production out here too because we actually get cold yeah. and we get hot. Yeah. So that really does help. We're not as, as mild out here. Yeah. Uh, it makes farming really hard when it's like 110 sure. <laughs> you know, during yeah. the summer. Yeah. But uh, it, the, the possibilities out here are endless. And sure. we're just starting and it's, it's one of those things where like you, you want to get to the point where it's like amazing. Yeah. Uh, but we got to take it one step at a time, little by little. So here we are. On, I guess, have you have you farmed this area yet, or has this mostly been prepped? This is brand new. Okay. Area hasn't been. Nothing has grown here except weeds so far. Okay. So you can see that from the tractor tracks that we have tilled it. Right. Um, we actually solarized it first because we have some pretty nasty weeds. Uh, we all recognize these weeds, right? What do you got, Bermuda there? Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, the worst. It's the absolute worst. Okay, so tell me about this then. You came here. The land looked pretty much like that over there. So what was the step-by-step -step of taking it to the point where I'm assuming right now it's ready to get planted, right? Almost, we Almost. gotta do a little bit more tilling. Yeah. So um, first what we did is we had to water it. I mean, it just was insanely dry. Obviously, you know, uh, microbes in the soil cannot live without moisture. So mm -hmm. watering it was a big deal. Yep. And you can see we have these warblers here. Um, Beautiful and, tool. Yes, <laughs> it's a great tool. They are amazing. <laughs> And it's crazy what a difference they make because they, uh, you know, uh, mimic what it would be like for rainfall yeah. versus like taking a hose and just throwing it on the ground and just watering it. You get these huge wet spots and dry spots. So we watered for weeks. Uh, in what kind of schedule? Just yeah. on like hour we would at do a time? Like, or? Yeah, we do an hour of three times a day during okay. the hottest part of the summer. Yeah. Uh, and then we solarize it, which means we have this huge piece of plastic here, um, which is just greenhouse plastic that we had mm -hmm. extra of. Typically you use black plastic, but we're using what we have because mm -hmm. it, farming is so expensive. Yeah, yeah. We got to use the material that's given to us. Uh, and we covered this, which killed a lot of weeds. We still are going to have weed issues. We have Bermuda, we have Nutsedge, we have Purslane, which are all really bad weeds. Sure. But at least it took it down quite a bit. Um, after we leave this irrigation on and I get my tractor back up and running, mm. I will till it several more times and add more organic matter. Water, you solarize, you get a weed bed come up, you kill it off. Yep. And then you went with a till mm -hmm. and then you just went back to watering and yep. working. And when you till, did you work in a bunch of compost or did I you did. just break the soil? No, we worked in as much compost as we can. Yeah. And honestly, if, if, if our 
budget was bigger, I would put four times as much compost sure. down. You know, yeah. but it's just on this scale, I have to have it brought in with the truck with the spreader mm -hmm. um, because doing this wheelbar wheelbarrow by wheelbarrow is not There's feasible. There's no way. Yeah. yeah, my back will not do it. There's no um, way. Yeah. So you know, we kind of put in, unfortunately, like bare minimum. Mm -hmm. But the soil microbes will they'll start doing their thing, and even though it's a slower process, it's a less expensive process. And you didn't do anything in the way of like inoculating the soil, just the compost and organic uh, Well, the compost does have compost tea in it, which okay. will inoculate yeah. it, absolutely. And it's incredible when, after we put the compost in and watered, we had mushrooms popping up. Yeah, that's a good which sign. Which is insane, because yeah. when you look at this soil, there's no way you would ever have mushrooms popping up. But yeah. just the difference between that and this, basically is the presence of microbes in water. There you go. That's what makes really good soil. So that's what we're trying to do here. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, we're here in a patch now. A, I mean, it's not even a patch. This is like, what, a thousand square feet of melons yep. or something like that? Just about. Yeah. Kajaris. Yeah, they're Kajaris. And check these bad boys out. Woo! Oh, nice catch. So you can smell them. Isn't that insane? Ooh, that's nice. So you're not growing these to eat. So they're supposed to look overripe. This is the whole point. Oh yeah, like yeah. you wouldn't be able to send this to a market and- um, Anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know, maybe Imperfect Foods or something yeah, yeah, would yeah. take it. But that's fine because I am growing it specifically for the seeds inside. Yeah. I don't care what the outside of it looks like. So also you can see my field is, you know, not looking great, but I let the vines die so I can easily go in and pick up my melons then it's easy so that to I see can them. harvest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't need big, beautiful, robust plants. Where are you trying to get this to where it's seed ready? So uh, this is pretty close. Yeah. Um, I would probably let it sit maybe for like a week or two to even further complete any development that happens. But yeah. what's great about Kajaris is they slip off the vine when they're ready. Mm. So once it slips off the vine, it's no longer getting sugar, but the seeds can continue slightly to develop inside. I actually came out here last week and harvested a bunch and then I had them in my Prius and in these buckets. <laughs> I knew it was a bad idea. Some of them are rotten. They spill all over the car. So now my car smells like yeah. rotten You Kajaris. got a beautiful aroma there. Yeah. It's a slip melon, so it comes off the vine easily, so there's no guessing. And it turns, actually, you can see, mm -hmm. from green to orange when it's ready. That's a huge difference in color. So, you know, you can see another immature one here. So there's no guessing. And if they're we're... extremely uh, uh, aromatic and flavorful. Yeah, I mean, they, I've, had a, I've had a bunch of them. Um, if we're talking total seeds you're getting out of this one patch, if you yeah. had to estimate, like, in a pack number, do you have any clue? I've got no idea. It, yeah, like it does depend thousands on develop. Though, right? But yeah, I mean, yeah. if this was a really good harvest, you know, I could easily get a thousand seed packs, maybe. Yeah. The field behind you, this was corn. We've, yep. we've harvested harvested that, and we got about 100 pounds of corn seed out of that. Wow. So, so like in this melon patch, you're looking at like thousand packs. It's like a $5,000 patch. It Something could like be, that. yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, keep in mind that that is after we do all the time that it takes to grow it, water it, yeah. We hand harvest everything and then we hand seed process it and then it has to go through cleaning and germination tests and um, yeah. seed vigor. It's like an absolute steal if the pack was 20 bucks. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. I feel like. It is one of the yeah. things that I always try to explain to people because, you know, they'll say, well, I can get, you know, 99 cent seed packs. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, cool. let's break it down and yeah. see how much time and energy and, and backbreaking work it takes me to get that seed into it. And yeah. then also how much seed is in it and what's the quality of the seed. Here's the secret of the 99 cent seed pack that I think people don't want to admit that when they're selling them. They is might like, get one plant out of it. Well, well, that, but like, but the people selling them are not growing it. They're just buying it from someone else and dirt cheap repackaging it. And it's it. usually really old, yeah. especially if it makes it to like the 99 cent store. That seed has been bought and sold so many times and it's made it to, yeah. you know, the 99 cent store. 50% germ, Less, bad variety, yeah. who mm -hmm. knows, right? Yep, yep. Okay, so Kajari's. We've got this massive stand of okra. I know, this okra puts my okra to absolute shame right now. <laughs> Do you ever eat it fresh? Oh my God, it's my favorite. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I mean, some people really don't like it. Um, do you ever eat it fresh? I, I've eaten it fresh. I ate it fresh recently on it's, a video. It's yeah. my favorite. People don't like the sliminess, but I crave I'm coming that. around to it. I crave that pickled. Mm. Divine. Well, pickled, sliced, and fried. Mm. Come on. Good night. Yep. Okay, so, so talk to me about this then. So you're yeah. growing the okra for seed. If we look in here, you get can get a good um, idea. Look at that. Of what the difference is. So like this is rock hard. Feel that. Mm -hmm. So that's not even finished. Right. So those will dry, and then we'll have to take the seeds out of those. You're not eating that one. Not eating that. You would eat like this size. So this will all continue to grow, and then these will actually dry on the plant. It's a dry seeded crop, mm -hmm. which means that they'll dry. We'll actually harvest these, and then what happens usually is 
they go into onto a tarp and we'll put another tarp on top and we'll run over it with a vehicle. That's how you break them out. We used to do it by hand, but mm -hmm. on this scale, you can't. there's no way. Yeah. Even if I did it for hours and hours and hours on end. Yeah. Um, and then we winnow it, you know, we thresh it, we winnow it, and then we do all the regular process. So t talk to me about this then. You've got all these little plots, you have different crops going, each seed is different, like tomatoes, we did a video, you have to ferment those out, mm -hmm. right? And so, why is that why there's such a difference in price between like, let's say an okra seed versus a broccoli seed or something like that, right? Absolutely, the other uh, portion of it too is how prolific of a seed producer it is. Yeah. Like okra is, you know, there are so many seeds in there, yeah. it's insane. Actually, you can- I'll break it open, yeah, break yeah, it let's, open. let's take a look. Yeah, that's very fibrous now. Yeah, so the seeds aren't fully developed, but you'll be able to see. Look at that. Yeah. Honestly, it looks kind of alien. It looks a little creepy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Look at that. Yep. Yeah, and these seeds will brown by the time they open up, right? Yeah, they'll be yeah. fully developed. Um, you can just hear when you broke that open mm. how fibrous it was. Yeah. It, they'll get a little bitter because the plant is protecting itself from, from predators. It's yep. trying to pass on its pro progeny. I, I can't even say how many seed packs we'll get out of this, potentially. Thou thousands, probably. Thousands. Yeah, but yeah. the other part of, of seed production that's really important is population. Yeah. So depending on the variety, you have to have a certain number of plants that have really healthy genetics. And so that plays a role into it as well. Like broccoli seeds, um, you need a lot of plants because they're outcrossers. Squash as well, same mm -hmm, thing. And mm -hmm. so it becomes just more of a commercial process because of the amount of space that you need. I know we just talked about how okra gets saved. How mm -hmm. does corn get saved? Is it dry seeded as well? Yeah, it's dry seeded. Yeah. So you should have seen us a couple of weeks out here. We just, we, you know, most people have equipment. We it went, was all right here. It was right? all right yeah. here. We just went through and harvested by hand and put everything into chicken feed bags. <laughs> and now it's at home in our greenhouse okay. and we're waiting for it to dry enough. And then we hand shuck it. And I actually have been hand shucking it, which is see. the reason why I have tons of cuts, you know, on my hands from You got some rugged hands there, yeah. I do. It's pretty. It's pretty <laughs> bad. You know. What variety was it? Um, that was a variety called Double Standard, which okay. is an organic. It, organic. This is certified yeah. organic. Um, all your stuff is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I can't say all of the varieties are that we carry, but all yeah. the stuff that we produce here and on our other farm yeah. are organic. And so with corn, like when I'm growing it, I'm if I'm growing corn and I want different varieties, I'm I'm blocking it way out. Yeah, Same I mean, thing here, right? Almost like a, a mile. Yeah, it's really yeah. not feasible for you to, to, to grow multiple varieties at your house unless you time it so that they're not tasseling at the same time. Exactly. Or you could bag the tassels, which is kind of a pain, but if you're on a small area, that's not impossible. Yeah. The nice thing about having this property is like this year, we produced 200 pounds of seed because we did 100 pounds here and 100 pounds at our other farm. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to worry at all about timing because it's too, you know, we're talking- it's, Miles and miles and miles yeah, away. Yeah, I think it's yeah, like yeah. 16 miles away. And so it was, it was different varieties. It was different yeah. varieties, yep. What's like the long term plan like this is a big move yeah right? so coming out here is really big and when I you know told my husband that's what I wanted to do I you know I asked him I'm like am I crazy and he's yeah. like well yes you are crazy yeah but Aren't we all though it, <laughs> it's one of those things where I just had to make the jump and really go 100% all in because we were being held back on the size of our property before yeah um, and I think what really helped was the demand I had people cheerleading me people you know we have this huge support system from our customers and it's the only way that we can make this happen mm -hmm. um, if people want local seeds then you got to support the seed company that's trying to make it happen yeah. and like I just I just feel so blessed that we have the capability to do this. And my hope is that by next spring, you know, we will have at least all four of these fields planted out and we get a field over there. Yeah. And then we'll start developing these fields as well. And, you know, we'll be able to be, you know, we'll be able to produce thousands of pounds of seed, oh, hopefully. Man. You can see it in your, can you see it in your mind's eye? Oh, like when absolutely. you look out, you, you see all these back here, there's all these tractors yeah. and like some debris and stuff. But then when you look and like let your eyes kind of blur, totally. you can see like field, 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 absolutely. okra, peppers, whatever. Yep. And we know. can be bringing in yeah. new varieties, more varieties. We can expand our research yeah. by just having more space. Uh, I mean, just all in all, it makes us a, a better company for our customers because we have more opportunities to do what we love and what yeah. we really know how to do, which yeah. is grow seeds.